Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now the very first episode, Steve was able to collect two rare expensive items that allowed two new chunks to be unlocked. We've unlocked the Edgeville chunk, which is incredibly useful, there's still a ton of content to explore there, and the Lumbridge chunk, which was chosen simply out of safety. If we die somehow, we need to spawn somewhere that we're allowed to be in, and that means we have to unlock the Lumbridge chunk sooner rather than later. And at the very end of the episode, I mentioned that the Lumbridge Chunk is going to make a pretty nice jumping off spot for our first major goal of the account. And that is going to be unlocking the Guardians of the Rift minigame. Guardians of the Rift provides so many important things for my account, most importantly being the runecrafting skilling outfit, which will increase the amount of runes I get anywhere in Gilinor by 60%, or otherwise just making runecrafting 60% more profitable. And I plan to do a fair bit of runecrafting, even in the nearest future. Now the Temple of the Eye has one prerequisite quest and that is Rune Mysteries, by far one of the simplest quests in the entire game, but we're still going to have to traverse quite a few new chunks which means we're going to need a fair bit of money even to do this simple early game quest. Alright, so the bank is looking kind of rough right now, but what we're going to try to do is explore the Edgeville dungeon. We haven't actually gone in there yet because our combat stats were so low, but we leveled all of them up to 20 in the last episode. And I think that should be a high enough combat stat to try to kill Chaos Druids. They are a very low level NPC, but they are very profitable because they drop a ton of different herbs, which we can sell for a ton of money. Okay, so right now we're heading over to the Chaos Druids. For one, we just want to actually train up our melee combats a bit. They're quite low and we're going to need them higher eventually, so we might as well get some melee training. And this is also going to get us a decent amount of money per hour. We pretty much have no money in the bank and this is a great way to generate something without requiring a cash tag at all. Okay, so we've been here for quite a while and we're already up to 30 attack and strength. We've been collecting every single herb drop we get. We can see our inventory here. We're at 56k just in our inventory. Plus we got this looting bag. So we're able to collect a lot more than just one inventory's worth. I'm going to keep collecting the herbs all the way to maybe 40 attack and strength. And then we'll see what our loot looks like then. Okay, so there we go. 40 strength. That, that doesn't really unlock us any weapons or anything. But each strength level is increasing our max hit marginally. So while we were killing all those Chaos Druids, we invested the rest of our money into Jades. If you remember in the last episode, we found a really good money maker, which was actually creating Necklaces of Passage. But for some reason, I just went and price checked one recently. They've actually gone up to nearly 1500 each, which is incredibly good. We're definitely going to try to take advantage of that by creating these necklaces to sell right on the Grand Exchange. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any money left right now, but luckily we do have a pretty significant loot tab of herbs from the Chaos Druid, so I think it's about time we sell those off. Okay, so after selling everything off from Chaos Druids, we got around 400k in loot. Not amazing, because it took us like three hours, but we're a little desperate for money, so we will take it. Okay, so I already purchased 600 jades, uh, we're going to purchase 600 silver bars, and 600 cosmic runes. Like last time, we're going to go through the entire process, start to finish of creating the Necklace of Passage, and hopefully we should be able to sell them for 1500 each, which is about 500 more than last time. Okay, so I've formulated a bit of a new technique here. What we've actually done is we're bringing the cosmic runes with us, and as we walk back to the bank, we're going to enchant along the way. This is kind of beneficial because I have no agility levels and I'm running out of run energy quite a bit. So I think walking back to the bank and enchanting them is going to save us a little bit of time overall. Okay, so we are done. That is 600 necklaces of passage created from scratch. I mean, we didn't collect the jades ourselves, but that's okay. We're going to price check another one here and they're still going for around 1450, which is incredibly good. If we sell them all, we're going to get almost 900k back, but we're going to have to hope they actually sell for that much. 
Okay, so these necklaces have been really slowly selling, but they are selling. Uh, while we're waiting, we've been chopping away at these Chaos Druids once again, and we're about to hit a really nice level. That would be 40 attack, which means we have 40 attack and strength. We can now use a Rune Scimitar. Our DPS is going to go up a lot. The Rune Scimitar might be our best option for a while because getting the Dragon Scimitar is going to be a bit of a pain. We have to go quite a bit out of the way to complete Monkey Madness. Alternatively, we could try to save up for the Vigorous Chain Mace, which is as good as the Dragon Scimitar and unlocked at the same level. But unfortunately, it's kind of expensive, so we'll have to see on that one. Okay, so I've managed to sell half of the necklaces so far, and we're going to attempt to try to buy the Jade Necklaces directly. And that's actually because I'm way more interested in the magic training than I am crafting. For one main reason, and that is crafting on a main account, I mean, it doesn't really matter if we have a high crafting level, we can buy everything anyway, so crafting doesn't really get us much, but leveling up magic does. Not only will we need it for higher level bosses and money makers, but coming up pretty soon, there's a money making method I want to try and it involves magic. Now probably something that a lot of people have actually done before, it's a pretty popular money maker, is charging air orbs. It's a magic training method, but also is quite profitable and most importantly is very nearby. It's only one chunk away from the Edgeville chunk, which means we only actually have to go one chunk out of our way. And as a bonus, it's also going to unlock the Dark Mage, which is a requirement for Temple of the Eye and gives us access to the Abyss, so we're definitely going to need it eventually, so why not make some money there as well. So we're going to get one shot at this for now. Uh, we're going to actually try to grab our task from Vanica, so hopefully it's something we can do. Okay, Ankus, uh, not doable right now and we can't skip the task for the foreseeable future. I mean, not that far away, but I'm not sure if it's really worth going over to the Barbarian Village just for that. Slayer is going to be quite an issue in the future, as the Slayer monsters are really spread around and we're going to have to slowly unlock them one at a time. Slayer is just not going to be feasible for quite a while. Okay, so we didn't end up buying any of the Jade Necklaces, unfortunately just no one is selling them. I did, however, manage to buy another thousand jades, so although our primary concern is trying to get our magic level up so that we can cast the charge orb spells, I guess we're just going to get some crafting experience as well. So there we go, we created another 1000 necklaces of passage, got us to 52 magic, and should hopefully make us a good amount of money as well. Unfortunately, they're really slow sellers, but we have a lot of other stuff we can do while we're waiting, so no issues there. Now, another monster that I have access to in the Edgeville dungeon is the Hill Giant. I opted to kill these to get to 40 defense simply because they're a little more AFK. I mean, if we got a giant key, we could try to kill Obor. That would be kind of neat, but besides that, we're mostly just leaving everything on the ground. But more importantly, we have base 40 combats now. Okay, so we sold off the majority of the necklaces of passage for 1300 each, which is still a tremendous profit. Now, if we have a look at our Grand Exchange right now, there's a couple things going on. Firstly, we're trying to buy an Arcane Prayer Scroll. I decided on the Arcane because right now it's really cheap, only about a mil exactly. And although we have some excess cash, we actually need to unlock quite a few new chunks simply just to complete Rune Mysteries. And although these locations are important for quests, they don't really offer much in the way of money making. So with that in mind, while we wait to snipe this arcane at the lowest price possible, we're going to do a little bit more crafting. So we're in the process of turning these thousand jades into another thousand necklaces of passage, but I just managed to hit 60 crafting already. Higher crafting, not really sure what I'm going for. There might be a few interesting money makers that are unlocked at a really high crafting level. And of course the crafting cape, but you know, more levels can't hurt. Okay, so we just finished up enchanting a thousand jade necklaces, and thanks to that, we actually got all the way to 55 magic, which is a really important level, because we now have access to high alchemy. The high alchemy spell is going to be a really important way for me to level up magic while making some money, and will probably be our primary training method from 55 magic where we are now, until I can start charging air orbs in the mid-60s. Now another exciting thing here, we actually bought the Arcane Prayer Scroll, took a couple hours but we got it, and that means that is our third item obtained. 
Okay, so we have a couple options here. I could either unlock the chunk to the north of Edgeville, which would unlock the ability for me to charge air orbs and unlock the abyss. But for now, we don't actually need that. So instead, we're actually going to push a bit further west from the Lumbridge chunk and make a beeline over to Draenor Village. So our new chunk, otherwise known as chunk 12594, um, doesn't have a ton to offer. There are some notable things here. There is a tree patch, which I would love to start using. The only way I think I can get farming experience right now is raking weeds, which, you know, I know people love raking content. But once I get access to my house, I could simply just use that to level up farming for the beginning. So I might just hold off for now. Beyond that, we have the ham hideout, which I'm not even entirely sure we have access to, and a couple yew trees. Okay, so thanks to a little bit of pre-planning here, and another thousand necklaces of passage sold, uh, not for as much as they were going for before, but still a lot, we actually still have a 1.6 mil cash stack. There wasn't really much to offer in that chunk, it was mostly just kind of a travel chunk, so we're just going to go straight up and buy another item right away, and that's going to be the black mask. The Black Mask is an incredibly useful item, we're not going to take advantage of it for a while because, like I mentioned, Slayer, not the most convenient to train for a while, but we're going to get it anyway. It's only around a mil right now, so I think it's a good pickup. Okay, so two seconds later, we get the Black Mask, and just like that, we can unlock another chunk. Now, because our short-term goal is to simply complete Rune Mysteries, we kind of have to go one more chunk to the west and unlock Draenor Village, but I'm not too sad about that because Draenor is actually quite a useful chunk for me to get. Straight off the bat, it actually unlocks two skills that I couldn't actually train before, those being Fishing and actually Agility. Fishing is pretty straightforward. In the chunk, there is Net Fishing, which means we can do that right from level 1, and we can start training a skill. Uh, less obvious though is agility. Drainer does have its own agility course, but it's not unlocked until level 10, and we're still level 1 agility, but there is actually a workaround for that, but we'll explain it when we get there. So I think a good housewarming party for the chunk is simply just to get a couple fishing levels. I grab myself a small fishing net from the Grand Exchange, and we're just going to start fishing shrimp for a while. Fishing is ludicrously slow, I'm not really sure why, but I think we're going to stay here for quite a while. Oh my god, we are almost done. We've been here for like an hour and a half almost, but we finally reached 25 fishing. A brutally slow start, but thankfully we've unlocked fly fishing now. And we actually do have access to fly fishing in one of our chunks, and that is in Lumbridge. I've actually never fished at this location before, so to try something new, I'm just going to go ahead and get a couple levels there. So finally, we can actually do a fishing method that's kind of quick. Okay, I actually honestly forgot that these fishing spots even exist but I'm honestly just happy we're getting some use out of the Lumbridge chunk. So just like that, there is 30 fishing. We can now catch salmon, so it's going to go a lot quicker now. And we also got a medium clue scroll that we actually have access to, but the dig point is near the ham hideout, which means there is a small chance we could actually complete this. Well, I did say small chance, so I guess that's going on the ground. Okay, so now that we have a couple more chunks unlocked, my next main goal is to level up my magic. Now I know right now we're actually doing a little crafting training, but there's a reason for that. And that's that I need a bit of money to start with to start casting High Alchemy. We're going to need probably like a mill to get started because the way it's going to work is we're going to buy some items right from the Grand Exchange and cast High Alk on them, but those items are kind of expensive. Stuff like Dragon Long Swords, Air Battle Staffs, Rune Items. So we need a little bit of money to get started, so we're making some more Jade Amulets. Well, there we go, we just sold a thousand Jade Amulets for 900 each, so that's a 900k back. Well, that's awkward, we're not going to make it. We're so close to 65 crafting, but we're not getting that today, I guess. I decided to craft another thousand Jade Amulets just to be safe, so we had a good amount of money to start with. We're going to sell these off, and then we're going to get started with our magic training. Now to cast a high alchemy spell, you need pretty much one nature rune or about 200 GP. So what we're doing right now is we're putting offers in for items that we can high alk for at least a 200 GP profit. And there's actually quite a few out there. For example, these black tea head bodies. They actually high alk for 8,000 each, which means right now 
we're making over a thousand GP in profit per high elk, which is really good. We wouldn't normally get that much money from it. And another item we're going to try are different battle stabs. So, so far so good. We alked everything for a pretty significant profit considering our time investment. Uh, next up, we just instantly bought 125 adamant plate bodies for over a mil. These are going to alk for like a six or 700 GP profit on each one as well. So that's like 100k in profit simply while we're training magic. I mean, for a while I used to kind of make fun of high alchemy. I didn't really see the point, but it's actually pretty profitable. Each cast is just 700 GP in the bank. So I've been buying a variety of different items here, and after this high alc, we're actually up to nearly 2 mil in cash, plus we got all the way to 58 magic already. You can see here there's actually quite a long list of items that we bought and alked. Onyx bolts, air battle staves, dragon long swords, red dehyde chaps, just a little bit of everything, but it's all adding up. Okay, so to continue our magic training, we're going to move on to something a bit more consistent. We just unlocked a new spell recently, and that is the level 4 enchant spell. This will allow us to turn diamond equipment into enchanted diamond equipment, which is a really good magic training method and should at least make us a bit of money on the side as well. So we have about 2 mil to work with, so we're going to invest into 900 diamond amulets and we're going to turn them all into 900 amulets of power. We're going to get a lot of experience along the way and hopefully make a bit of money as well. And just like that, we are already up to 60 magic. What the hell is that person wearing? Oh my god. Which is actually really nice because we can now cast the Charge Earth Orb spell. Which is something that we actually have access to right now and will be a good bridge until we can start charging air orbs which is a bit higher level but more profitable. Okay so super quick diversion here. Uh, we're going to go instantly buy 500 red topaz. But if we price check the Bracelet of Slaughter it's going for 4,400. Uh, which is incredibly overinflated right now but we'll see how many we can actually sell off. Okay, well we did manage to sell some, but you can see how quickly the price crashed. We sold most of them for 3300 Still a decent profit, but unfortunately someone beat me to it. So we'll just carry on with our original plan. So I mentioned earlier that something that we actually unlocked at 60 magic is the Charge Earth Orb spell. Now the Charge Orbs in RuneScape, you actually have to go to a very specific location, but luckily for us that location happens to be in the Edgeville dungeon, which we already have unlocked. So what we're going to do is buy a thousand unpowered orbs and we're going to turn those all into earth orbs. To do that we need to invest three cosmic runes per cast, but for every orb that we charge we're going to get about 400 to 500 GP in profit while training magic. Uh, so what we're actually looking for here is the obelisk of earth and it's located very closely to the chaos druids. Now, unfortunately there are some poisonous spiders and a greater demon defending it, but we're going to have to work around that. Okay, I buckled and I bought an anti-poison. I couldn't handle it. I just kept getting poisoned. But uh, we've been charging these earth orbs for a while and we're already up to 66 magic, which is a really important level because conveniently that has now unlocked the charge air orb spell, which is overall going to be better, more profitable, and more experience per hour. There's only one issue with it and that is that the air obelisk is actually located in a different chunk, but luckily once again it is very close. It's located in the chunk north of Edgeville and conveniently we need to unlock that anyway. So it's not a wasted chunk by any means and it happens to unlock a very powerful mid game money maker. So I think that's definitely the next chunk that we need to unlock. So I kind of ponder what item I want to buy here and I've decided I'm just going to go with some tank legs. We're going to go with the Duroc plate legs because well, you know, we might as well keep buying within the set. Duroc armor will be useful eventually. But most importantly that has unlocked us another chunk. One of the very few wilderness chunks I expect we're going to unlock, but I think this one is definitely worth it. Alright, so we're out here at the Air Obelisk. Uh, it's in the wilderness, so you can get killed here, and when it happens, you lose like nothing, but you get confused for a few seconds on why someone even bothered, but even with some deaths here and there, it's definitely still worth doing. From my calculations right now, you're going to get roughly 500k GP per hour, which right now that's like one of my best money makers. And at the same time, we're going to get about 40,000 magic experience as well. And honestly, I might stay here all the way to 75 magic, probably not all in one go, but the quicker I can unlock the trident, I mean the better. 
so if you look at our bank, I actually purchased 2,000 unpowered orbs and over 5,000 cosmic runes. That's all I could afford. And we're going to enchant all 2,000 air orbs. Well, we are finally done. I died, I think, three times, which is more than I expected. If you look at the bank, we have a nice 2,000 air orbs in there. And that also got us all the way to 68 magic, so a lot of experience gained already. But the part I'm excited about, selling them off. So right now they're going for a bit under 1,500 each, which means these 2,000 are worth pretty much 3 mil. There we are guys, they finally sold off for 3 mil, which actually brings our cash stack up to 4.2 mil. Now, normally, if I actually have a lot of money to spend for whatever reason, I'm going to actually try to prioritize going for more expensive items that are useful. But because our goal right now is actually to complete Rune Mysteries, I'm going to go for a couple cheaper items because I still have a couple chunks I need to unlock before I can complete this quest. So an item that's on the list and still relatively cheap is the Ring of Stone. So we put an offer in to buy that. Well, the Ring of Stone actually took a long time to buy at 1.1 mil, but we finally got it, which means we've now unlocked another chunk. So while I was charging those orbs, I was doing a little research on what I was going to do next. Now, my original plan was to do some agility training because right now our run energy just evaporates no matter what we're doing because we only have level 1 agility. Now, I thought I had unlocked the Drainer course last chunk, but I actually haven't. The access point for the agility course is actually a little bit too north. And although that's not strictly what we need to do right now, I've actually been tempted to unlock the northern part of Drainer Village because uh, I'm just tired of walking everywhere. Okay, so we've unlocked the rest of Drainer Village, but we still have one problem. The Drainer Village course requires 10 agility to start training on it, but we only have level 1. Now there actually is one way in the game to get around this, and it's going to come from this item right here, the Toy Mice. Now for those who don't know, the Toy Mouse is something that you can buy directly from the Grand Exchange. It's a really obscure old item that you can wind up and release onto the ground. Now something that most people don't know is that when you pick this item up off the ground, you actually get a little bit of agility experience. I think you get two and a half experience every time you pick it up, which is almost nothing. But you can start doing this right at level one. Uh, so what we're going to do is go into this small-ish room in Drainer Village. We're going to wind up all the mice, release them, and pick them back up. A brutally slow method, but luckily we only have to get to level 10 agility to unlock our first course. So there we go, five agility is done with. Right now we're getting about 1500 experience per hour, which means getting to level 10 will take me roughly an hour. Not too bad, but it's such a terrible method to do that I hope we can get this done with as soon as possible. So this should be the last batch of mice right here. That is going to bring us to level 10 agility, which is all we're going to need. We'll never have to do this again, luckily for me, and we can now move on to an actual training method. The Draenor Rooftop Course is a pretty decent training method, and realistically it's going to be our only rooftop agility course for a while, and at the very least we're going to stick here longer than a normal account would. Okay, so we're just checking in here at 25 agility. Uh, along the way we also collected 11 marks of grace. Now we're going to stack these up, but we're not going to be able to claim them for quite a while. To claim them, we'd have to get all the way over to Birthorp, which I don't think on its own is worth going there, but, you know, if we wanted to get our Defender, sure, we would probably go over there, but I'm not sure if that's in the immediate plan. So there we go, we've done a couple hours of agility and have gotten to level 30, and I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now. Even just getting to level 30 agility will greatly reduce the depletion rate of our energy, so it'll last longer, which is really what I was interested in. Okay, so no more distractions here. We are going to complete our first quest, and to do that, we need access to the Wizard's Tower. We'll need it to complete Rune Mysteries, plus it is the access point for Guardians of the Rift, which is really what this is all about. So looking at the bottom of the list, I think I'm most interested in the Tome of Fire. Currently only costs around a mil, and I think could come in handy at some point, so we're going to go ahead and try to buy that. Okay, so while we wait for that to buy, we're going to go ahead and do a bit more magic training. And once again, we're going to do that by charging Air Orbs, 
So we're gonna go ahead and buy 2,000 unpowered orbs and 6,000 cosmic runes, uh, which should be enough to charge them all. This will probably take me about four or five hours to complete, but should give us quite a few magic levels. Okay, so we're checking in here a couple hours into the grind and we're about to hit a really nice level, 70 magic already. We're actually just blitzing through these early magic levels. That will give us access to a couple things, but we are very quickly approaching the most important level, I think, in the near future, and that is 75. Now, normally when people get to simply like 50 magic, they'll use an Ibn Staff, but to get that for me, I'd have to go quite a bit out of the way. So really, we actually do have to get all the way to 75 magic before we get access to a good magic weapon, that being the Trident of the Seas, which we can luckily just buy right from the Grand Exchange. Okay, so we are finally done with all 2,000 orbs. That did take me about, well, the entire day almost. Oh my god, and my glory is uncharged. Sad days. So luckily, while we were charging all those orbs, our Tome of Fire did end up buying. So we'll go ahead and claim that, adding once again another item to our collection. And on top of that, we also got 2,035 air orbs out of that, which if we put in for the actively traded price is 3.2 mil. We're kind of rolling in cash right now. Alright, so the Wizard's Tower is unlocked, and this is one that's actually going to be pretty useful. There are quite a few quests that involve this location, and of course, Guardians of the Rift. Well, we did a little side diversion here to complete our very first quest. Uh, I definitely could have done this before, but we're going to do Cook's Assistant. It seems iconic to do this as your first quest anyway. And it got us to 4 cooking as well, so how about that? That said, our main purpose here is to finally start Rune Mysteries, and even progress it a bit too. Okay, so we've completed the quest up until the Varrock section, and unfortunately we actually need to unlock two more chunks to get there. And that's because Aubrey's Magic Shop actually isn't an adjacent chunk, so we either have to go the route of the Palace or the route of the West Varrock Bank. Now there are definitely quest locations in both, but for now I think I'm probably going to go the route of the Palace, because I think the two quest locations that start here are more important than Rat Catchers and Gertrude's Cat at this point anyway. Now thanks to all the air orbs that I crafted, we still have a fair bit of money left over here, and we actually used that to buy a Dragon Harpoon, another cheaper item that will come in handy eventually, but I was able to snag it for 1 mil 75k, and that is another item added to our trading collection. Ah, the Varrock Palace chunk, one that I know really, really well, and I can tell you for almost certain there's not a lot of interesting content here. That's not entirely true, we do get a tree patch, which is really awesome. There are some guards if you want to steal from them, but the thing I'm actually most excited about right now is actually this chunk has an estate agent in it, which will allow us to purchase our very first house. Our player-owned house is going to be extremely important, as it unlocks a huge amount of quality of life features, teleports and other incredibly useful things, so the house is going to be pretty key eventually. So we're finally here, we only have one more chunk left until we can finally unlock the runecrafting skill. We've actually had to unlock quite a few areas just to get this skill, but I think it's going to be worth it. The final item that we're going to buy here is actually going to be the Dagon High hat, mostly because I think it looks cool. And there we go, we managed to purchase it for 1 mil 85k. Oh yeah, look at that, all you can see is the mustache. <laughs> Alright, so the final chunk that we just unlocked is the Varrock Center Square. Now this chunk's actually really nice because we now have pretty much unlocked the Varrock Teleport. We're now able to teleport here to a legitimate location, so that will save us a bit of time. A couple other important things here is we do have the access point now for the Varrock. Agility of course, the only issue is we would actually have to unlock the chunk to the west to fully complete it, which I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. We've also unlocked the Varrock Museum, which is nice, and most importantly right now, we have unlocked Aubrey's Rune Shop, which means we can finally complete Rune Mysteries. Oh my god, it's finally done. Rune Mysteries is complete. For it, we get one quest point, but most importantly, the Rune Crafting skill. So with that, we can now craft runes, and in the next episode, we're going to start working towards getting that rune crafting scaling outfit so we can up our rune production and really start printing money. 
Now, thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. There's so much support in the first one. Really appreciate everyone who checked it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to make sure you don't miss the next episode, which should hopefully be next week. So hopefully I'll see you then. Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Alejandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.